Today on MTG Impact we continue our tour of Commander Anthology 2 with the final deck. This is Devour for Power. And if we take a look at the contents, here's what is inside. If you go back to the first video, we took a look at that. We've covered Wade into Battle, Built from Scratch, and Breed Lethality. So this final one, we're taking a look at Devour for Power. Massive beasts, apparently. So let's move this box aside so we've got plenty of room. And take a look at the cards here. So Devour for Power. Get a nice step box with a massive beastie on the side. And sealed deck and a divider. And there is the Mimeoplasm. So let's crack this open, do a little bit of organization. See how we go here. So what I've been doing is separating out the lands, just trying to keep things a little more organized. And we've got tokens there. And then basic lands, they have been putting near here in the first part. Alright. Let's split things up a little further, cut the deck. Okay, so we'll start off. We have a very nice mythic foil. The Mimeoplasm, legendary creature Ooze. Zero, zero for five mana. So he's a three color commander. As the Mimeoplasm enters the battlefield, you may exile two creature cards from graveyards. If you do, it enters the battlefield as a copy of one of those cards with a number of additional plus one, plus one counters on it equal to the power of the other card. So if you're not familiar with Commander, this basically means you can have selections of cards in any of those colors, so black, green, or blue. So he looks pretty tough, the Mimeoplasm. First of the foils, next up we have Damia Sage of Stone, legendary creature, Gorgon Wizard. There we go, there's the snake hair, piercing eyes, watch out, 4-4-4-7 four, 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 mana with death touch, skip your draw step. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you have fewer than 7 cards in hand, draw cards equal to the difference. So topping up your cards there, pretty cool. Then we have Vorosh the Hunter, legendary creature dragon, 6-6-4-6 six, six, six mana with flying, Whenever he deals combat damage to a player, you may pay two in a forest if you do put six plus one plus one counters on Varosh. Alright. Moving right along. Let's take a look here. So, Fact or Fiction. This is one of those fun cards. Instant for four. Reveal the top five cards of your library. An opponent separates those cards into two piles. Put one pile into your hand and the other into your graveyard. Alright, so that could be good or bad depending on what you get. Mull Drifter, flying elemental fish by the look of it. Slipstream Ill, another fish beast. Spell Crumple, Vow of Flight, Windfall, Artisan of Kozalek. So this one's from uh, BFZ or Oath of the Gatewatch. Wonder. Buried alive. Ew. Flesh bag marauder. What on earth? This is one of the crazier artworks of Zombie Warrior. So what does he do? He enters the battlefield. Each player sacrifices a creature. He's a 3143 mana. Watch out. Grave Digger. I believe this one's in Core 2019, reprinted. Oh, this is interesting. We got a flip card, a Nozumi Grave Robber, Creature Rat Rogue, 2 1 for 2 mana, pay 1 and a Swamp XL Target card from an opponent's graveyard. If no cards are in that graveyard, flip Nozumi Grave Robber. In 2, Night Eyes the Desecrator, Legendary Creature Rat Wizard. Okay, so we've got the two sides there. He's a 4 2. 
Pay four and a swamp put target creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. So if you can get a beefy creature there, real threatening one, that would be quite good. Okay, next up, rise from the grave, dreamborn muse, memory erosion, minds glow. So we've got a couple of rares here. Riddle Keeper, Homunculus, look at that guy. <laughs> like the guy in Monsters Inc. Avatar of Woe, Butcher of Malakir, Vampire Warrior, Dark Hatchling, Extractor Demon, Grave Pact, a lot of uh, classic cards here, Living Death. Uh, this one, I think this was the strategy that uh, T. Wu used to great success. Uh, let's take a look at that actually. Each player exiles all creature cards from the graveyard, then sacrifices all creatures they control, then puts all cards they exile this way onto the battlefield. Craziness. And that one is a sorcery for five mana. Mortivore. So there's a Lurgoyf, uh, he is of, is he of the same species as the Tarmogoyf? Leave a note in the comments if I'm mistaken. Patron of the Nozumi Rat Offering. What on earth? You may cast this card any time you could cast an instant by sacrificing a rat and paying the difference in mana cost between this and the sacrifice rat. Mana cost includes colour, so this is a legendary creature spirit, 6647 mana. Whenever a permanent is put into an opponent's graveyard, that player loses one life. Ooh, craziness. Some real colourful and interesting cards here. Side Spectre. Sewer Nemesis. He is a horror, alright. Watch out for that guy. Shared Trauma. Lurgoyf. So there's another one. Same sort of thing here as Tamagoyf. Lurgoyf's power is equal to the number of creature cards in all graveyards and its toughness is equal to that number plus one. So we've got a star and one plus star. Pay two and two forests for this guy. Troll Ascetic. Alright, and then let's continue on with the rest here. We have Skullbriar, the Walking Grave. What? That is cool. Legendary creature, zombie elemental, 1-1 one, one for 2 mana with haste. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on it. Counters remain on Skullbriar as it moves to any zone other than a player's hand or library. So I wonder if that includes the command zone. You can keep your plus 1, plus 1 counters. That seems pretty good. Zadek, Lord of Secrets. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Vulturous Zombie. Rexiel, the Risen Deep. So this is a mythic 5846 mana legendary creature. Kraken. He has Island Walk and Swamp Walk. So this creature can't be blocked as long as defending player controls an island or a swamp. Whenever Rexiel, the Risen Deep, deals combat damage to a player, you may cast target instant or sorcery card from that player's graveyard without paying its mana cost. If that card would be put into a graveyard this turn, exile it instead. Seems pretty good. Next up we have an Oblivion Stone. Solemn Simulacrum. So this is a different printing from the one we looked at the other day. Artifact Creature Golem. Triskelevis. So we saw some of these tokens the other day. So that's what those or how those are generated sign in blood stitch together <laughs> this is some nutty artwork that is very cool siphon flesh siphon mind what else we're we gonna siphon nothing okay unnerve vow of malice Acidic Slime. So this one has Death Touch, Brawn, Cultivate, 
Eternal Witness Relic Crush. So now we're getting on to green, more green creatures. Tribute to the Wild. Vow of Wildness. Yavimaya Elder. Desecrator Hag. <laughs> Some more nutty artwork. That is Hideous Creature Hag. 224. Four mana, so you've got a bit of a choice there between swamps and forests. When it enters the battlefield, return to your hand the creature card in your graveyard with the greatest power. If two or more cards are tied for greatest power, you choose one of them. That seems like a real game changer. We get a Demir Signet, Golgari Signet, Lightning Greaves. These are pretty good. Give your creature haste and shroud. Simic Signet, and I was wondering when this would appear, Soul Ring. How could we have a Commander deck without Soul Ring? Okay, and then if we look at the mana base here, so we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, Swamps, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, Forests, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, Islands, so this is a three color deck and I'm betting we'll have some nice mana fixing options here. So we have Baron Moore Command Tower. So here we go. Add one mana of any color in your commander's color identity. Demir Aqueduct. Dreadship Reef. Golgari Rock Farm. So here we go. All different color combos that we're going to need. Dwar Isle Refuge, reminds me of that band uh, Gua, Lonely Sandbar, Rupture Spire, Simic Growth Chamber, Zvogathos the Restless Tomb, okay, Temple of the False God, Terramorphic Expanse, Tranquil Thicket, and then we have some tokens, a eh? Curious? Shapeshifter. He looks like a cross between an elf and a goblin. He's a changeling. Just a 1-1. One, one. So we have how many of these guys? One, two, three of those. Then we have some common gun variety birds. One, two, three, four of those. And goats. Not to forget the goats. This would be pretty funny, I bet. Churning out the goats. So you get one, two, three, four. Four of those, and if you have had an army of goats on the battlefield, leave a note in the comments. Need a bit of a chuckle. We have knights, two, three, four, five, six of those. Spirits, one, two, three of those. Okay, so nice variety of tokens here, and as I noticed before, there are some that we use with the other decks in this set. So you might want to mix things around a little bit, put them in the rightful places. Alright, so leave a note in the comments. Which deck would you pick? Is there one you're planning to pick up? Are you planning to get the Commander Anthology Volume 2? I think it's fairly good value, although the price is going up a bit. Uh, I think it was, I traded cards for 150 in value. I've seen it on eBay about 180 so your mileage may vary. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button for more Magic Gathering unboxings. And be sure to tap the notification bell to be notified as soon as new videos are released. Thanks for watching and have a great day.